Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you a little bit. I've got a lot of new subscribers and a lot don't know what's going on with me. I have a uh, heart failure, congestive heart failure, and um, I've had it for about three years. Uh, two years ago, this last March, I had got a pacemaker, but it's kind of how I started my van life. Um, my heart went down to where it was only working 25%. I was still working as a caregiver then. I was put in the hospital, sent home, and um, wasn't able to work anymore. And so I uh, started swimming every day, got my heart rate to where it was working at 30%. And so they gave me a pacemaker. And my pacemaker is a defibrillator pacemaker. Um, but uh, And I'm on all kinds of meds. But this is a monitor that we're looking at here. I just turned it on. I plugged it back in. And it's connected to me. Right here will show that where it's connecting to my pacemaker. But there's been a problem with it. That little black wire you see on the back. You'll see me point it out here in a few minutes. Um, uh, it's got a crack in the wire and some wires are showing there. So I think that's why it's not sending to the doctor. But anyway, this, this monitor does not use much signal at all or much power at all. I could, my Blue Eddie would probably run it two or three weeks. It, it barely uses any power. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's not sending to, uh, the doctor's office so they can read my pacemaker and every three weeks they get a reading from my pacemaker and it lets them know how I'm doing. And that's why it's all important now that I weigh myself every day and I take my blood pressure every day because this monitor picks it up. Uh, my scales and my blood, uh, my blood pressure cuff has a, it's, it's connected to this and it sends it to the doctor. Now you can see where that wire is cracked at. So I'm pretty sure that's why it's not working. But now it's all important that I weigh every day and do my blood pressure every day. They're switching up my meds a little bit to help my heart failure because it's getting better. I've been exercising more, eating better. Here it is trying to send to the doctor's office. And as you'll see here in a minute, uh, there will be a yellow light. It shows it didn't send. But, so I have the new wire on the way, and uh, once that gets here, I'll reconnect it, uh, I'll connect that back to it, and then it'll take a reading again off of my pacemaker and send the information to the doctor's office. Um, but yeah, I'm doing good, but you know, if you think that you can't live in a van or a, a nomad life and be uh, dis disabled, you're mistaken. You can do it. If you really want to. Hey guys, wanted to touch base with you guys and, and talk to you a little bit more about this. Yeah, so this is one of the main reasons I did start van life. Um, because my health was so bad and I wanted to have a chance to do things I really wanted to do before it was too late. And uh, I, I've been lucky so far, uh, you know, able to get my heart working to a 30% so I could get the pacemaker and now I'm on the road to getting it to work a little better. Um, the left side of my heart does not work. And um, that's why I have the pacemaker. And it's really just a defibrillator. Um, if I did have a heart attack, it would kick it. Um, but losing weight and eating right is the key things to getting more healthy. Um, I, my diabetic numbers are in control now. They're under, they're like 5'2". The last time I checked, uh, my A1C levels. Um, I was up to 7'5", I believe it was. Um, so yeah, I've got those numbers down. I'm working on it. I'm exercising more. So <clears throat> this will help. And I'm the meds are changing up. Uh, I'm at a point where I can change meds and it will kind of help help uh, it's a, a certain diabetic medicine that'll help you lose weight but it also helps heart failure and so you guys out there you young ones be sure and eat right while you're young because when you get older those bad habits will sneak up on you so eat right eat healthy uh, the ideal uh, what I've been told by my doctors is the ideal uh, diet is Mediterranean but man that is a hard one I've tried it and I feel really weak when I'm on it, but it's because my body's not used to it. But right now I'm more doing keto. Like in the beginning of this, you'll see me have a bagel. Well, that was two meals actually I had made. It was um, uh, lunch. I ate a, a half of the egg with uh, one of the bagels and the other half, I just wrapped it up and put it in my fridge and then ate it again 
for dinner. So, but I don't eat breads very often. Um, I had like maybe once or twice a week, I'll have a sandwich or something like a bagel. Um, but uh, yeah, but my, I am losing weight. And, uh, but it's all important for me with what I have to weigh every day, because if I gain three pounds overnight, I have to call the doctor because that means I'm retaining water. That My heart's not working good enough to make my kidneys work right. So they're real careful with that. I'm only allotted two liters of liquid a day, no matter what it be, it's two liters of liquid a day. And, um, uh, and my blood pressure, I have to keep a close eye on that. So um, I have to send those in, uh, when, when I take those in the morning, that pace mon pacemaker monitor picks up uh, the readings from the, the blood pressure cuff and the scale. They all kind of connect together uh, via cellular and Bluetooth. And so it will send all those readings to the doctor so they can keep track of my weight every day. And, but it only sends like once every two or three weeks. So it sends a whole data report. Um, but they told me they've added blood thinners to my, uh, medications. Uh, when I was on the trip, uh, up the coastline, I had a doctor's appointment online and, uh, my heart was in AFib at night when I was sleeping. Uh, one of the nights, not when I was on the trip, but before the trip, my, I was in AFib 150 beats per minute. They said it stayed like that for 45 minutes. So they put me on blood thinners to make sure that I don't have a stroke because the, the blood will pull in your heart. If I'm explaining this right, this is how they explained it to me. The blood can pull in your heart when your heart's doing that on the AFib and it can cause a stroke. So <clears throat> I'm on blood thinners now. I feel like I'm doing good. I feel much better. Um, but yeah, it, it is, is, it is, it's scary, but, uh, I feel good. I feel healthier. I feel healthier every day. The more I do, the more I exercise, the healthier I feel. The better I eat, the healthier I feel. Um, and hanging out with you, I feel pretty good. Hanging out with all you guys uh, gives me somebody in my life that I'm hanging out with. You know, I love hanging out with you guys. It's amazing. I have not been as happy as I am now in my lifetime uh, uh, as just, you know, I feel rich. Um, I, I love my van and I love van life and, and, uh, I'm so glad I chose this lifestyle. Uh, I just feel better. Um, but anyway, all right guys, I just really kind of wanted to touch base with you because there's a lot of people scared to get into this lifestyle. Maybe they have health reasons or financial reasons. You know, sometimes you got to just take the leap and do it if you're really wanting to do it. And I don't regret it for one minute. Um, I actually live healthier than I did before in sticks and bricks. Um, and that's kind of what this video is about. Uh, to catch up members that are uh, subscribers that are new that don't know my health issues and, and don't know my story. So there's my story wrapped up in a nutshell for you guys. Um, all right, guys. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Peace out.